Lektion 2, Deutsch für Anfänger, uh, German for Beginners, Lesson number 2. And if at any point during this live stream you have any questions, you can go ahead and type them into the live comments. Uh, I've got a uh, secondary screen here where I can read all of those, so I can see that there are several people commenting already, uh, saying Hallo and Guten Tag and Wie geht's euch and all of that. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, this should be a, a good presentation here for you guys today, especially for you beginners out there, uh, trying to get you to understand the pronouns, the conjugation of German sentences, and, and a little bit of the word order stuff. Uh, we're obviously not going to go too in-depth with the word order questions, but we will have uh, a few questions in there that can help out. Um, and then we're going to let you guys practice it just a little bit. So, um, so without further ado, uh, dann beginnen wir heute. So. Erstens gibt es äh, neun Pronomen im Deutschen, das heißt ich, du, er, sie, es, wir, ihr, sie und sie. So, these are our first nine pronouns that you learn. These are the nominative case ones. These are used for the subject of the sentence. Uh, ich obviously means I and is used in the singular form. Uh, obviously, that is used whenever it's you speaking about whatever it is that you're doing. So, ich renne, I run, ich gehe, I'm going, and so on. Uh, du is the du form. That's, uh, that's the you informal. And if you'll notice on the list here, we have three U's, which is very confusing to beginners. Uh, so we do have an explanation of that later on in the presentation. Uh, but for right now, we do have just du, ihr, and Z. Uh, you'll notice that the Z is listed there in the Mehrzahl or in the plural, uh, but it can actually be used as singular or plural. It just didn't really fit onto the uh, presentation that way. So we have three U's, do, ear, and Z. We'll come back to those and how they work individually here in a little bit. Uh, the other ones here, we have er, Z, and S, which rounds out the rest of our singular pronouns. Uh, that would be ich being I. Du is you, that's used for the singular form and used as informal. I'll explain what that means here in a little bit. Er means he, or the masculine it, uh, and I'll explain what that means later on as well. Z, which means she, or the feminine it. Uh, S, which is it, or the neuter form of it. Um, this one cannot be used for he or she. This is only used for it, uh, never used for a masculine or a feminine thing. Um, there's a weird exception that I'll get to here in a little bit, but... Uh, that's generally the rule. Uh, and then the ones in the Mehrzahl or in the Plural, the plural, uh, those are wir, which means we, obviously I and another person, ihr, which is the other you we had already talked about, they, meaning they, same as uh, what it is in English, so Z, more than one person, so if you have er und Z together, that would be Z, meaning they. And the last one on there, of course, is Z, which is you, formal. Offensichtlich kann man nur ich nur verwenden, um zu sagen, dass der Sprecher auch das Subjekt des Satzes ist. Obviously, you can only use I or ich to uh, show that the speaker is also the subject of the sentence. Im Präsens steht meistens e am Ende des Verbs, um zu zeigen, dass das Subjekt ich ist. Oder dass das, uh, das ich das Subjekt ist. So, uh, most of the time this means that there is an e at the end of the verb in order to show that uh, this is the ich form of the sentence, or that ich is the subject. Ich is one of those pronouns, though, that will always be the subject. If it's not the subject of the sentence, it becomes mich or mir or uh, some other things, okay? So it is always the subject, no matter what. If it's in the sentence, it must be the subject. If it's not the subject of the sentence, you're using it improperly. So, a couple of examples down here that we have. Beispiele, das wir hier haben. Uh, wir haben zuerst hier, ich lese ein Buch which is, I am reading a book. You'll notice the E there at the end of the word lese. Uh, that is there to show or indicate that the ich is the subject of the sentence. So, ich lese, I am reading. Ich lese ein Buch, I am reading a book. And that's relatively uh, straightforward as far as subject, verb, direct object. Now, if you don't know the grammar topics or the grammar terminology, it's not that big of a deal. It's just the person who's doing something, that's the first thing in the sentence, and that's ich. The verb is the thing that is being done, or the, the action of the sentence. So in this case, it's reading. So ich lese, I am reading. 
And the thing that is being laser, that would be the thing that's being read, is the next thing that shows up, which in this case is ein Buch, a book. Okay? Oh, uh, die Frage, was, da, was bedeutet ein Beispiel? What does a Beispiel mean? What does uh, that word mean that I have there? That is uh, examples. So these are just example sentences that show you uh, what each one are. Okay? Uh, ich sage nichts. Here again, we have the ich form at the beginning of the sentence. We have ich followed by a verb, which in this case is sage. Uh, sage is a form of the verb sagen, which is to say. So ich sage. And then the last thing there is nichts. Ich sage nichts. Nichts is nothing. So uh, again, it's the same format as before. We have the one doing something in the sentence. Then we have the verb itself, the, the action of the sentence. And then the thing that is being acted upon, which in this case is nichts, which means nothing. Ich sage nichts. Next one on our list we have here, ich mache das. Ich mache das. I am doing that. Ich mache das, uh, again, has ich at the beginning of the sentence, that's your subject, and then we have mache, which is to do, followed by das, which is, of course, that, or uh, this. Um, and again, we'll have an e there at the end of the verb to indicate here that it's the ich form. Same thing with the last example, except that we did it a little bit more complicated this time. Ich gebe ihm einen Ball. I am giving him a ball. Ich gebe ihm Einen Ball. Here we have uh, a few extra things here. So, uh, ich gebe still starts off with our subject and then our verb, the, the thing that is being done here in this sentence, in this case, giving. The E at the end here tells us that our subject, or the one that is acting, is ich. The thing that is being acted upon now is moved over just one position now. We have it here as einen Ball. That's the thing being acted upon. That means that it's in the accusative case. And if you don't know what that means, it really doesn't make that big of a difference at this point. It just means that this is the thing that is being acted upon. It's the, what's being verbed is what I usually call it. Um, this is your direct object. And that means that ein changes to einen. Um, and this just indicates that it's the masculine object, but it's uh, being acted upon in the sentence. Now, the thing that we added this time is im. Im is in the dative case, which is something that uh, receives the direct object. So, in this case, him is the one that's receiving the ball. Okay? Does anybody have any questions about this particular section so far? Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds to uh, type any questions you might have about this particular part of it, and then I'll move on to the next slide. Okay, I don't see any questions on the uh, comment section right now, so we'll move on to the next pro, uh, pronoun on the list. Das einzige andere Pronomen, was, das man in der ersten Person verwenden kann, ist wir. The only other personal pronoun that you can use in the first person is wir. Uh, that means that we are the only other first person personal pronoun. Das verwendet man natürlich, wenn es zwei Personen gibt und einer davon ist der Sprecher. So, uh, let's say it's I and my brother or something. So my brother and I, mein Bruder und ich. In fact, that's one of the examples down below. If we were to replace both of us with a pronoun, we would be using the pronoun wir. So wir sind, wir machen, wir gehen, whatever it is that our, uh, my brother and I are doing. Uh, but generally speaking, this is replaced here with wir. Um, and, and that means that... Uh, we have here uh, an en at the end of the verb. So this is das Verb endet meistens mit en. So most of the time this means that it's the exact same form as what you'll find when you look it up in a dictionary. The wir form is probably the same as that version right there. Um, there are a few exceptions to this, uh, but very, very rarely. So um, before I move on to the examples down below, I do have a question in the uh, in the comments here from Magic Musics. Uh, it says, was ist er as accusative? Uh, or, was ist er im accusative? Uh, what is the form of er if it were the accusative object or if it were the direct object, that is? Um, that's the form in, I-H-N, uh, and that would be like, um, ich mag ihn, I like him, okay? 
Uh, if that's the case, then ea changes to een to make it the direct object. Uh, our next Beispiele, or next list of examples here, we have a few verbs that are put together with uh, an en. And so we start off here with wir gehen nach Hause, we are going home. Okay, wir gehen nach Hause. Nach Hause is a prepositional phrase. It just means that it tells you uh, where we're going. So in this case, nach Hause, towards home. Uh, the via and the gehen, again, are at the beginning of the sentence. We have the subject or the person who is acting, which is we, via. And then we have gehen, which is to go. And that, of course, has an en at the end of it because it goes with via. Every time that you have a subject and a verb, you must make sure that the subject always matches with the object or with the uh, verb. So let's say if I say in English, um, I goes, people will look at you funny. It's just it sounds a little weird for the same reason you can't say like via gate. If you put a T at the end of it, people are going to look at you weird. It's a little bit off. It doesn't sound right. They'll know what you probably meant to say, um, but it's just definitely not gra grammatically correct. So, via again has to go together. Um, and you always have subject and then verb. Uh, there's a few exceptions that we'll talk about here in a little bit, uh, but via again generally is how this works. Uh, the next one on our list we have via via kommen ins Zimmer. We are going into. Uh, we are coming into the room. So. Kommen is the basically the opposite direction of gehen. Um, gehen means you're going toward something else, and kommen means that you're coming away from that thing. Uh, in this case, we have kommen ins Zimmer. We are coming into the room. Uh, ins Zimmer is again another prepositional phrase. It tells you the direction that we are going. Um, kommen is our verb, and that of course has an en at the end of it, uh, indicating here again that it's the wir form. Same thing with the next one. Wir sehen dich. Wir sehen dich. Uh, wir sehen dich means we see you, uh, and dich is actually the accusative form of du, uh, which we'll get to when we get to the use here in a little bit. Uh, but wir sehen dich, we see you. Since you is not the subject of the sentence here, uh, we do have to change it from du to dich. Again, the verb is the same. We have an en at the end of it, and the via form stays there at the beginning. Now, the last example is just an example to show you that you don't always have to actually use the pronoun itself. You can obviously use uh, nouns and pronouns together to make it into a compound. So since this one's plural, we use someone else and ich. Together, those two make wir uh, or the we form. So in this case, I chose mein Bruder und ich, my brother and I. Uh, the verb is then directly after that. So even though it's not the second word in the sentence, it is the second thing in the sentence. It's the second part of the sentence. So mein Bruder und ich is the first part, and then stehen is your second part. Nebeneinander means next to each other and is again a prepositional phrase, and this one is uh, in the third position directly after the verb, indicating where they are. Okay, uh, if there are any questions about these examples, uh, I'll let you guys have a few seconds to uh, Ask some questions in the comments, and uh, then I'll move on to the next one. Okay, so far so good. So uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Das, uh, die zweite Person verwendet man, wenn man direkt mit einer anderen Person redet. So, the second person is what you use when you're talking directly to someone. So, uh, es gibt auf Englisch nur you. So, there's only in English you. Aber im Deutschen gibt es du, ihr und sie. So, there's only the you form in English, but in German we call it du, ihr or sie. So, now we have to figure out what's the difference and how do we uh, use each one in the different situations. And this is usually a little bit confusing to uh, at least English speakers because uh, we just simply don't have this in English. Uh, a lot of other languages though, so if you are uh, asking, if you're coming from a Spanish-speaking country or something like that, uh, they do have, you know, ustedes and that kind of thing. So, um, this is not uncommon for a lot of other languages, but English speakers really struggle with this. First word on our list is du. Du is the one that you'll hear in things like du, du hast, and, you know, Rammstein songs and whatnot. But du is the Freunde, Familie, Kinder, Tiere, und leblose Objekte in der Einzahl. So, uh, all of that boils down to two things. First of all, it's singular, which is what in der Einzahl means. And then, of course, it is Freunde, friends, 
familia, family, kinder, which are children, tiere, animals, und leblose objekte, so lifeless objects. So let's say that my computer crashes in the middle of this live stream and I get really angry at it and I have to, you know, yell at this uh, slow piece of dung, uh, then I would, you know, I would call it the do form whenever I'm insulting it. Uh, but for the most part, it's used with uh, people that you know pretty well. So your family, your friends. Um, and then the two that I find a little bit odd is children and animals. So um, if I'm talking to my dog, it's like, oh, du süße, du süße Hund, ja, du bist ein braver Hund, ja. So that, I'm using the do form with all of that just for my dog. Um, and the same thing happens with children. And it's mostly just that you don't want to be all overly formal with children. Um, and that makes sense. So, Kinder, Tiere, Leblose, Objekte. Now, the ear form is basically the exact same thing, but in der Mehrzahl. So this is in the plural form. So do is only used when it's one person at a time. But if you're talking to more than one friend or more than one family member, more than one child, more than one animal, etc., uh, then you're going to be using the ear form. And this is relatively easy to figure out once you figured out the do form. The last one on the list is the Z form. And this is what some people call the formal form uh, or the... Uh, the polite form, and these are the forms that you're going to be using with fremde, which is just uh, strangers or people you don't know, uh, beamte, which is uh, you know, workers or employees of various places, uh, geschäftsleute is business people or people that you meet uh, in your day-to-day -day activities that you don't know, uh, und ein Lehrer, which is a teacher, uh, and of course this could be used in the Einzahl or in the Mehrzahl, so this is either in the singular or in the plural form. Uh, and you can use either way. It doesn't really make any difference. So in the Einzahl oder in the Mehrzahl. Uh, so let's say that I'm talking to uh, one police officer. I would use the Z form with that police officer. If I'm talking to the other one that comes up, I would use the Z form with that other police officer. If I'm talking or addressing both of them at the same time, I'm still going to be using the Z form even though it's plural, okay? Every time it's going to be the same thing. Du, ihr, Z. Uh, and something I don't have on the list here is... Gott, so God. Um, if you have a deity of your choice, so whatever your religion may be, um, what do you think you would use if you were to address your deity of choice? Would you use the do form? You, would you use the Z form? Uh, or if you have multiples, would you use the ear form? Um, go ahead and leave a comment in the uh, comment section. I'll give you a little bit of time to uh, tell me what you think. Do you use do, ear, or Z with your God of choice? Do, ear, or Z with God? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Ah, Magic Musics is the first one to answer. He says do, or I assume it's he. I don't really know. Uh, but they say do. <clears throat> Anybody else have an answer out there? Uh, we have uh, Johnny thinking it's a Z. We got Stefan with uh, do. Uh, Greasefire with Z. Z forgot. Do, Z. We got about a 50-50 chance here that uh, we got one, two, three, three people... Uh, with the do form and uh, three people with the Z form. Now we're up to four people with the Z form. Uh, unfortunately, all of those who are saying Z are actually incorrect. Uh, you are supposed to use do uh, whenever you are uh, addressing your God. So let's say you're praying and you're saying, you know, our Father who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Well, it sounds all formal in English, but in German you're actually using uh, the do form whenever you're talking to God. So that's a little bit confusing to a lot of uh, learners who are trying to figure this out for the first time, but do is actually used for God. Uh, let's say you have more than one deity, then you would still be using the ear form. So let's say I have uh, Zeus and Hera, and I'm praying to them both. I would actually use the ear form for them. Um, but that is definitely something that confuses people because it sounds like it should be an authority figure, uh, someone's supposed to be talked to with respect, um, obviously a little bit more of an authority figure than, uh, let's say, a police officer or something like that, but uh, apparently you still use the do form with God.
All right, so now let's break these down just a little bit more and we talk about each individual type of you individually. So, uh, first one, mit dem Pronomen du verlangst das Verb st am Ende im Präsens. So, in the present tense, uh, with the pronoun du, the verb will take an st. Now, there are irregular verbs for this form, so there are a few things that are going to be a little bit out of sync. Um, but the verbs that I've chosen for today, these are all regular verbs, uh, so you don't have to worry about the about the sim changes or anything like that. Uh, but for now, just know that you'll take off the en that you'll find in the dictionary form of it, and then add st. Sometimes you will notice that a verb just has an n at the end of it uh, when you look it up in the dictionary. So uh, like lächeln, lächeln means to smile, and it ends in ln instead of en. In that case, you're just gonna take the n off instead of the en. So for the most part though, drop en, add st for the do form. Uh, and our Beispiele down here at the bottom are examples. We start off with Bleibst du lange zu Hause? Bleibst du lange zu Hause? Are you staying at home long? Now in English we say long at the end of the sentence and uh, in German we have uh, the at home at the end of the sentence. So now the question becomes why did we do that? Uh, and what's the big deal here? Why are we, uh, why are we even doing that? Um, and this is a little bit confusing to some people, but um, you start off with time, manner, place is the, the order that things go in. So uh, once you get like the objects out of the way and stuff like that, there's a little bit of flexibility. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to go time, manner, place. So this time we have a time and a place. Lange is our time. And place in this case is zu Hause. So uh, a long time at home. A little bit weird, but time, manner, place. Uh, and I'll explain what manner means here in a little bit as well. The main thing here is we started our sentence here with our verb, which is bleibst du. Bleibst du. So we have our st at the end of our verb that indicates that it's the do form, and the do shows up after that. Now this is a little bit different than what we had in the previous sentences, and that's because these are questions. So before we had a statement, which means we had a subject and then our verb. Now we have to switch it around and have a question for uh, the a question format, which would mean that we have verb first, then second. Uh, second thing is the subject. So bleibst du lange zu Hause? Are you staying home long? And the next one we have warum liegst du auf dem Boden? Warum liegst du auf dem Boden? Why are you lying on the floor? You'll notice here we didn't start with the subject and we also didn't start with our verb. This time we started with a question word. A question word precedes all of these other rules. So uh, just like it does in English, whenever you want to use the word why, you put that at the beginning of the sentence. Um, you can be all creative with it, say like, you're lying on the floor, why? But for simplicity's sake, you can start your sentences like this here in German, same way that you would in Ger uh, in English. So, warum liegst du auf dem Boden? Why are you lying on the floor? Question word first, then our verb, and then our subject. So, the st there at the end of liegst, again, indicates that it's the do form. Uh, and then auf dem Boden actually counts as our place, which uh, is what the time, manner, place things that I was talking about before. Glaubst, oh no, I uh, skipped one. Uh, was denkst du? Again, we start off with our question word, then our verb, and then our subject. Was denkst du? What do you think? Was denkst du? What do you think? Glaubst du das wirklich? Now we're back to not using a question word, but we still have our verb in first position. Glaubst du das wirklich? Do you believe that really? Or do you really think that? Now, in this case, we have uh, the verb first, then our subject. Das is actually the thing that is being glaubt. So, uh, glauben is to believe, and the thing that we believe or don't believe uh, is das, which is that. Wirklich is, a, is an adjective that tells us uh, a little bit more about the sentence. Um, it's actually an adverb, I guess. Uh, but it tells you a little bit more about the sentence, tells you really. Um, it adds a, a little bit more doubt to the sentence, like, oh... Is that really what you believe, or, uh, or are you just making this up to make us feel better? But in this case, uh, we have verb, subject, direct object, or the accusative object, the thing that is being verbed, and then a uh, manner, which in this case is really. So um, 
If you put wirklich in the top sentence there, with bleibst du lange zu Hause, um, I would probably put it directly before lange, but that's only because then I would be using it to describe lange. So, bleibst du wirklich lange zu Hause? Are you staying really long at home? Or are you staying home very long, really long? Du gehst noch nicht nach Hause, which means you aren't going home yet. Du gehst noch nicht nach Hause. You aren't going home yet. Uh, in this case, we again have our subject back to the beginning of the sentence because as indicated by the punctuation, we are not using this as a question. This just says, you are not going home. Um, Geist is our con conjugated verb, which goes with the do form. Um, and that one, of course, has to show us here that st at the end of it. Um, noch nicht means not yet, which in this case is our time element again. And then after that, we have nach Hause, which is the place. So... In questions, we have verb first, subject second, and in statements, we have the subject first and then our verb. Uh, and Magic Musics has a question. If you've got any other questions about this slide, now's a good time to write those in the comments as well. But uh, Magic Musics uh, has the question, what's the difference between Denken and Glauben? Um, glauben technically means to believe, um, and then Danken means to think. So while I did translate them both as think, um, was denkst du is uh, what's your opinion about this? What do you think? Uh, what is your cognition telling you about this? Uh, whereas Glauben is to believe. So you're taking it on faith. There's a little bit of uh, an element of faith in this. So Glauben, let's say, um, you know, uh, the earthquakes are caused by uh, by those giant worm things on the movie Tremors. And uh, that's what causes all of the earthquakes. And somebody's like, do you really believe that? Um, probably not. But uh, if that were the case, you would be using the verb Glauben in that case. Um, but if I say something like, um, you know, um, I think you're ugly. <laughs> and then you'd be like, you know, do you really think that? Um, and you're just asking what's actually going through your mind. Um, so Glauben is a little bit more faith-based. Denken is uh, more factual. But uh, I don't see any other questions down there in the comments, so we are going to move on to the next one on the list, which is ihr. Mit dem Pronomen ihr verlangt das Verb T am Ende den Präsens. So, in the uh, present tense, we need a T at the end of the verb in order to use the ear form. Uh, and I only have two examples here because I think it's kind of uh, repetitive at some point. So uh, we'll try and cut down a little bit on the repetition and see if we can cut that down. But uh, first example here, wie nennt ihr dieses Gericht? Which is, how do you call this dish? Literally speaking, um, we would probably say how in, uh, or what do you call this dish in English? Um, but in German, you would say, wie nennt ihr dieses Gericht? How, uh, how do you call this dish? So you're eating something at somebody's house and uh, you don't know what it is, and so you ask this question. Again, you'll notice that we have a question word first, which is V, and then we have our verb, which is nent, followed by ia, which is our subject, the one who is doing something. The something that you all are doing is the verb nennen. The thing that is being nent, or the thing that is being called, is dieses Gericht, which makes it your direct object. Uh, wann fahrt ihr nach Hause? When are you driving home? Uh, this one is uh, an entertaining example uh, just because of the word fahrt. A lot of people like this word just because it sounds funny. Um, but fahrt means to drive. And so wann fahrt ihr? When are you driving? And then nach Hause here tells us our, uh, our place that we are driving to. And the last example on this uh, page, apparently I didn't put the translation for, but uh, we'll see if we can use this as an exercise instead and just say that I did this on purpose. But uh, the first one on here says, Geht ihr heute Abend ins Kino? Geht ihr heute Abend ins Kino? Um, I'll go ahead and let you guys have a little bit of time to uh, uh, write down in the comments what you think Geht ihr heute Abend ins Kino means. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to answer this question that I have uh, from Anna Amora. So, Anna Amora says, Wann benutzt man IG am uh, Imaktiv? Adjektiv. Um, so, zum Beispiel, schwer, schwer or schwierig. 
So, schwer hat kein IG am Ende, aber schwierig doch. So, wir wollen wissen, warum es hier IG gibt und warum in manchen anderen äh, Adjektiven gibt es gar kein IG. Ähm, wirklich habe ich keine Ahnung. Um, I really honestly don't have an answer for that. Uh, so, whenever you say uh, the difference between schwer and schwierig is honestly, they're not even the same word. Schwer means uh, difficult. Schwierig means difficult, but it's more uh, heavy. It's a, it's a bigger word. It means that it's uh, heavier or um, heavier than schwer, we'll call it. Um, but honestly, I, uh, I don't have an answer for why you would use an IG and when you would not. Um, I'll have to Google that one and uh, see what I can come up with and let you know. If anybody else has the answer to that question, I would actually be kind of curious as well because I don't know. Uh, looks like most of you are getting the uh, question there for what's the translation. Uh, looks like you're doing pretty well with that. So the question is, geht ihr heute Abend ins Kino? Are you going this evening into the movie theater? Or are you going to the movies tonight? Are you all going to the movies? Um, as long as you have all of the elements there, you're okay. So uh, it doesn't really make much of a tra difference as far as translation is going. Um, but what I would probably say in English is, Uh, are you going to the movies tonight? Um, but that's, you know, me as an American. Um, but the verb here is gate, which is the verb gehen, uh, conjugated to go with the ear form. So are you going, or go you, if you want to translate literally. And then heute Abend, this evening, ins Kino. Um, you'll notice again that we have heute Abend in front of the ins Kino, um, which is um, the time first and then our... Uh, place that we are going again, same rules that we had before. Uh, pronom, the last one on our list of the they of the U forms here, we have Z. Uh, Z actually takes the same ending as the Vier form did, which means that it's going to have an EN at the end of it. Um, and these are always going to be this exact same version. So EN um, for both the Z form and the VIR form, it's always going to be the same. It doesn't matter if this is a singular Z or if it's a plural Z. Um, as long as it's the Z that means you, you're going to have an EN at the end of it. First one on our list of examples here, we have Sprechen Sie English. One of the first phrases you should learn whenever you go to a foreign country. Do you speak English? Sprechen Sie English. And you'll notice again we started with our verb and then our subject. Uh, this is just because it's a little bit easier when you're writing sentences using uh, you. You obviously don't want to have a whole lot of uh, sentences where it's just like, you go do this, and uh, it sounds a little bit weird. So I wrote a lot of questions for this part, but uh, it's good practice for writing questions and getting the word order anyway. So, do you speak English? Sprechen Sie English. Woher kommen Sie? Where are you from? Woher kommen Sie? Uh, in English, we don't really have a, a equivalent to woher. Uh, we kind of do, and we should use it in the same way that woher is used, but we don't. Um, so in English, I would say, where are you from, or where do you come from? Uh, but I would always put the from at the end of the sentence. In German, you can put it right there on the question word and say, where from are you? Um, in English, this just sounds a little bit weird and um, overly stiff. So, woher kommen Sie? Again, question word, verb, subject. Haben Sie diese Hose in einer Nummer größer? This one's a little bit more complicated. Haben Sie diese Hose in einer Nummer größer? Do you have these pants in a size bigger? So, let's we'll start off with our verb here. Haben Sie, do you have? Uh, verb and subject. And then we have our direct object, or the thing that is being had. Um, and that is diese Hose. Diese Hose in einer Nummer größer in a number, in einer Nummer, größer, larger. So, haben Sie diese Hose in einer Nummer größer? Do you have these pants in a size bigger? Uh, Magic Music wants to know what's the difference between wo, woher, and wohin. Uh, this is actually relatively simple. Wo is only whenever it's stationary. So you're not going to, you're not coming from, it's always just that's the location of this thing. Okay, so, uh, wo ist mein Supersuit? So, where is my Supersuit? 
uh, you would say wo in that example. Uh, woher is where from, so you can use this with common. Uh, woher kommen sie? Uh, woher kommt dieser Lärm? Where is this uh, noise coming from? And then the last one is wohin, which is uh, where to. So wohin gehst du? Where to are you going? Wohin fährst du in, the, uh, in den Ferien? So where are you driving in the vacation or in the break? Um, but woher and wohin both require some sort of motion going from one place or to another place. Uh, her being the, the from, uh, hin being the to. And then wo is always used as a stationary form. Uh, let's see if anybody else has any other questions here for this particular page, and then we'll move on to the, uh, the difference between a, z, and s, which are the only ones uh, we have left besides the plural z. No more questions, and we will move on to A, Z, and S. Uh, this one's got a little bit longer of an explanation, uh, just because it is a little bit more confusing, besides that I chose to put three pronouns together at the same time. Uh, the pronoun A, Z, und S kann man alle, uh, alle als it ins Englische übersetzen. So you can translate A, Z, and S all as it in English. Uh, man muss darauf achten, dass das Genus des Substantivs mit dem Genus des Pronomens übereinstimmt. So, this tells us that we have to pay attention that the gender of the noun uh, agrees with the, the gender of the pronoun. Uh, mit diesen Pronomen und Substantiven, uh, Substantive, uh, should have an N at the end of there, sorry, that's a typo. Uh, mit diesen Pronomen und Substantiven, uh, die man mit diesen Pronomen ersetzen kann, verlangt das Verb T am Ende. So, uh, if you're using these pronouns and, uh, and nouns uh, with these pronouns, you have to have, of course, a T at the end of the noun, uh, at the end of the verb. Um, now, the thing that I was trying to explain in the top of this is that you can have these all translate as it in the German, uh, in the English language, um, but they still sound like they mean he in German. Um, and this is because the German system, if you haven't realized this yet, uh, has three genders of nouns. We have der for masculine nouns or things that are usually manly. Um, exceptions are abound all over the place because obviously if it doesn't actually have a gender, it's just kind of pretty arbitrary. Like the first example I have there is der Tisch. Der Tisch is a masculine noun and it means the table. Obviously there's no reason that or uh, rhyme or reason that it would make any sense that a table would be masculine, but it is. Okay, so if we're using a pronoun to replace der Tisch, we would use the pronoun er, which is why I have it in parentheses there. Uh, in order to conjugate our verb here, we have the verb stehen, and we put a T at the end of it so that it fits with der Tisch. Obviously, this is the er, z, s form, is what I usually call it. Um, and we have to have this T here, in der Ecke. In der Ecke is in the corner. So der Tisch steht in der Ecke. The table stands in the corner. Or you could say er steht in der Ecke. He, or it, stands in the corner. Obviously, in English, we wouldn't say he is standing in the corner if we're talking about a table, but in German, you would still use the pronoun er, which can mean he, but also just means it. Die Tür is the door. Die Tür is a feminine noun, and so we have to use the pronoun Z in order to replace it. Either way, your conjugation of your verb is going to be a T at the end here, braucht. Die Tür braucht eine neue Lackierung. Lackierung, sorry. Die Tür braucht eine neue Lackierung. The door needs a new paint job. If you replace it with a pronoun, you would use Z, and the sentence is basically the same. Z braucht eine neue Lackierung. So, it needs a new uh, paint job, or the door needs a new paint job. Either way, uh, it's going to have to be uh, a T at the end of the verb. Das Kind spielt Schach gern. Das Kind spielt Schach gern. So, this one again, we have here S as the uh, example. And this is a little bit weird because the noun itself is das Kind, which is the child, and yet is a neuter noun. That means that it doesn't actually have a gender. Um, it's das Kind. In order to replace it with a pronoun, you would then need the pronoun S. 
Now, a lot of people in the uh, the modern version, um, you would actually use a or z to replace this kint based on the fact that the kid probably has a gender, okay? Um, but most of the time, uh, you are going to use the more modern version, just say a or z. Uh, but you can actually replace a child or das Mädchen, the girl, and you can replace that with s instead of using a or z, okay? At any rate, you still have a t at the end of your verb, which is spielt, and schach is your direct object or the uh, the thing being played. Okay, gern is going to be describing the way in which it is done, and so you would say das Kind spielt schach gern. The child likes to play chess. If you've got any other questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. But I've got uh, a question here from uh, Fauzi Zadi. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but I apologize. Um, benutzen manchmal die Deutschen it als der die das. Uh, so do the Germans sometimes use the words uh, der, die, and das as it? So could I just say, der, uh, instead of saying der Tisch, I could say der steht in der Ecke. Um, die Antwort darauf ist ja. Uh, eigentlich sagt man manchmal der steht in der Ecke, die braucht eine neue Legierung, uh, das, spielt gern, uh, das spielt gern Schach. Uh, aber das ist nur mehr so uh, eine Umgangssprache oder... Uh, Das ist nicht Hochdeutsch. Also, ähm, man kann das sagen, ähm, muss man aber nicht. Und manche Leute mögen das wirklich nicht, wenn du äh, über Menschen sprichst und äh, entweder der oder die oder das sagst anstelle, äh, anstelle er oder sie. So, ähm, so the, uh, the example that I said is, uh, you know, some people will say that you can just replace der Tisch and just put in der and say like der steht in der Ecke. Um, and technically that is true. You can say der steht in der Ecke instead of saying der Tisch steht in der Ecke or instead of saying er steht in der Ecke. Um, technically speaking, this makes it a different kind of pronoun. Um, technically that's a demonstrative pronoun. Um, and a lot of people will use this, and uh, in fact somebody actually mentioned in the uh, comments here, uh, Magic Musics actually says that uh, the old version of Deutsch Aktuell 1 says that uh, you can use this to talk about people um, instead of using the ers yes form. And while that is true, that it happens a lot, it is not technically grammatically correct, it's not technically um, considered to be Hochdeutsch or uh, High German. Um, in fact, whenever I wrote a song about, um, it's like an introduction song, I, uh, I'll post a link here in a little bit in the, uh, uh, in the description, but it's, uh, it's a song that was supposed to be like a getting to know you song, and I said, uh, der, in order to refer to a person, and, uh, Katja from Deutsch für euch actually commented that, you know, she, it's just a little bit weird for her uh, to hear people referred to with the DAD or DAS instead of using AZ or S. Um, so it is done. Uh, lots of Germans do it. Um, is it technically correct? Maybe. Uh, it's kind of one of those fuzzy answers where it's like, eh, it's done. So does that mean it's incorrect? No, because obviously native speakers uh, have the ability to just be like, well, this is what we say. And so whether it's uh, in Duden or not is not really relevant, but it's, it's something they say. So uh, long story short, yes, you can use that. Now we got the last one on the list here, and that is the pronoun Z. So in der Mehrzahl braucht man das Pronomen Z, uh, aber in diesem Fall verlangt das Verb AN anstelle T. So instead of using the uh, ending T, we're now going to be using EN, and this time Z actually has a different meaning than she, now it means they. So I just basically took the same sentences that we had before in the previous section and turned them into plural nouns instead of the singular form. You'll notice that der Tisch changed to die Tische, which uh, should have an E there, but for some reason I left that off. Uh, but die Tische stehen in der Ecke. The tables stand in the corner. Um, die Tür didn't change the D, but it just changed uh, Tür to Türen. So die Türen brauchen eine neue Lackierung. The doors need a new paint job. And das Kind changed to die Kinder, which had an ER at the end of it now. And each one of these has now an EN at the end of the verb instead of having a T. So now it's stehen instead of steht.
brauchen instead of braucht and spielen instead of spielt. So, uh, like I said, the tisch there, that's going to bother me that there's supposed to be an E there, but uh, it should be die Tische stehen in der Ecke. But uh, each one of these, all of them mean they, and you can use this if you have like der Tisch und das Kind stehen in der Ecke. Uh, so the table and the child are standing in the corner. You don't have to have the same uh, noun each time. You can use different ones, but uh, you know you got your options there. Uh, does anybody else have any questions down in the comments here? Uh, so far I'm not seeing anything, so we will go ahead and move on to the next thing. Here's a handy little chart that uh, if you're one of my Patreons, I'll actually be uploading this uh, presentation. I'll fix the small errors that we had talked about already. Uh, I'll fix those and then I'll upload this to the uh, Patreon folder so that you can get that if you're one of those people. Um, $5 a month and you get worksheets and all of the uh, scripts for my videos and uh, all kinds of fun stuff over there on Patreon, but uh, there's my little plug of that. Uh, at any rate, this little chart here tells you uh, not only what the pronouns mean, but also how to conjugate each verb. So uh, let's say you have the verb uh, gehen, and you wanted to use this for the ich form. You would say ich gehe, right? So uh, each one of these, it has pronoun plus the verb, and then plus the st or the t or the en and so on. Don't forget that the z form down there at the bottom of the list, that's uh, the z meaning you formal. Um, in that case, you should, of course, be using an en on the verb, but it also is not only in the plural, but also could be singular, depending on how it's used. Does anybody have any questions about this section here? Okay, now we have some übung for you all. Uh, so I have a bunch of sentences here, a total of nine, because there are nine pronouns, which means that you should be using each one of the types that we had talked about before one time. So uh, for each one of these, just go ahead and write your answers in the uh, comments down below. You don't have to retype the answer or anything, but all you have to do here is just put the ending to the verb uh, in the little part where there's a line there. So for, just, for number one, you could just put number one and then whatever letters you need for the ending there. Um, but anyway, uh, go ahead and leave those down in the comments and we'll go through them here in a little bit once you guys have had some time to uh, write some comments down there. Okay, looks like we're starting to get some comments in here, so I'll go ahead and start into the uh, sentences and start breaking them down here. Uh, the first one on the list says, meine Mutter. Meine Mutter means my mother. And since it's at the beginning of the sentence and the sentences that I've shown you so far, you always have the subject at the beginning of the sentence. That means that this is our subject, meine Mutter. Okay? Uh, if that's the case, what pronoun would we use in order to replace that? That's how I always think of it whenever I have to conjugate a verb, or at least whenever I was starting out, that's how I got kind of got the hang of things. But we have the word meine Mutter. Obviously, if I'm saying it in English, I would say my mother. I would say she, okay? She. So if I'm using the she form, that's the a z s form, or just in this case, the Z form. And I would have to have a T at the end of our verb. So meine Mutter geht zur Arbeit. My mother is going to work. Meine Mutter geht zur Arbeit. Second one on our list here starts with our verb, which means that we have to look at the next thing in the sentence in order to figure out what our subject is. Ihr is actually her. 
or ear, sorry, not her. Uh, ia, in this case, is the uh, the you all form. So this is relatively simple. You just look back at that chart that we had before, and ia takes a t at the end of the verb. So, glaubt ia, do you believe? Then you'll have dem man at the end of the sentence, because this is a dative verb. So some of you might know what that means, uh, but glauben means that uh, it's to believe. If you believe a person, that means that you have to use here the dative case, which means der man changes to dem man. So that's something for a, a much later topic whenever we're talking about the German grammar, but uh, this here should be glaubt ihr dem man. Do you believe the man? Nummer drei, der Junge, blank. Der Junge is the boy. The boy is the first thing in the sentence here, which means that it should probably be our subject. Uh, and in this case, that is also correct. So, der Junge, I would say, is er whenever I replace that with a pronoun. And so, of course, we have here, der Junge sagt nichts. Der Junge sagt nichts. The boy says nothing. We just added a T here. Nummer vier, Ken. Here we have our verb first, which means we have to again look at the second thing in the sentence in order to figure out what our subject is. And this is a capitalized word that means Z. That means that we're using here the U form. This is a formal form. And the, this means that we're going to have to use here EN at the end of our verb. Kennen Z mich. Do you know me? Kennen Z mich. Do you know me? Das Mädchen. Blank. Das Mädchen is our subject here, which is the girl. In English, I would probably say she, uh, but in the German language, we could actually replace this with the uh, pronoun s, meaning it. Uh, either way, it would technically be fine if you just use s or if you use z. It doesn't really matter as far as uh, that is concerned for our uh, conjugation here, so it should just be here a t at the end of our verb, because it doesn't really matter if it's a masculine thing, a neuter noun, or a feminine noun, it's going to have to be used with a t at the end of the verb. Das Mädchen stellt mir viel, uh, zu viele Fragen. Das Mädchen stellt mir zu viele Fragen. The girl is asking me too many questions. Nummer 6. Ich Blank. Ich is our subject here because ich is always the subject, as I mentioned before. That means that the verb has to have an e at the end of it. So this should be ich finde meine Schuhe nicht. Ich finde meine Schuhe nicht. I don't find my shoes, or I'm not finding my shoes. I can't find my shoes. This is usually something that my daughter screams in the morning. I can't find my shoes. Ich finde meine Schuhe nicht. Nummer sieben. This time we don't start our sentence with our subject, and we also don't have our subject in the second spot. The first thing here is warum. Warum is our question word. Du is our subject. Since du is the subject, we have to use here an st at the end of it. So, of course, this should be warum legst du dich nicht hin? Why don't you lie down? Warum legst du dich nicht hin? Somebody already mentioned this, but there is another typo. Man, I'm doing great. I think I'm up to three now so far. Uh, that should be die Hunde, which has an E at the end of it. Um, or it could be der Hund, either way. Uh, but I was trying to go for die Hunde uh, to avoid the irregularity in the uh, form of Laufen. Uh, but since die Hunde would be the plural form here, we would, of course, need an EN at the end of the verb. So die Hunde laufen im Hintergarten. The dogs are running in the backyard. Die Hunde laufen im Hintergarten. And the last one on our list is a little bit confusing to some people because you see the word ich and you know that ich must be the subject if it's in the sentence. But since there is the word und, it means an, we have to have these two together, which means my brother and I. That, of course, is going to be using the wir form, as I did in the example earlier. So, last one here should be mein Bruder und ich. Essen heute Pizza. My brother and I are eating pizza today. In this case, you'll notice that I put the word heute before the pizza, which means that the time actually precedes our direct object. And this happens quite a bit in the German language. You'll have uh, the time element put in front of a direct object, or the thing being verbed in the sentence. Does anybody have any questions about these sentences so far?
number seven, warum legst du nicht hin? Why don't you lie yourself down or why don't you lie down? This is an ST at the end of it because it is the do form. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the next thing on our list. Vorstellung, word order. So, here, uh, this is just me going over the rules that I've already mentioned over and over again, and that is, uh, das Subjekt steht zuerst in einem Aussagesatz. That means that in a statement, the verb is in second position, and the subject is in the first position. Now, this is not always true. You can actually have sentences in which the uh, the time element comes first or other things can come first in the sentence, uh, but that's going to have to be a topic for another day. Uh, but for the most part, it is going to be subject and then your verb in the sentence. So, I have a few examples of that, where it is der Mann geht, the man goes. We have der Mann, which is the subject, and geht is to go. Das Pferd rennt, the horse runs. Das Pferd rennt. The horse runs. Wir kaufen etwas. Wir kaufen etwas. We are buying something. Again, we have subject, verb. The third thing in the sentence there is your direct object, the thing being verb, as we had mentioned before. The bottom of the page here we have Das Verb steht zuerst in einer Frage. The verb stands in the first position in a question. Das, uh, das Subjekt kommt danach, so the subject comes after that. So, das Verb steht zuerst. Uh, geht, for instance, in the first one, all I did was I took the same sentences as before. Der Mann geht, the man goes, and switched the uh, word order so that the verb is first. Geht der Mann, is the man going. Rennt das Pferd, is the horse running. Das Pferd rennt, the horse is running. Kauft ihr etwas? Are you buying something? Wir kaufen etwas. We are buying something. So, verb first if it's a question. Uh, verb second if it is a statement. If, of course, you need a question word, the question word comes in front of that. And so we should have here, Wohin geht der Mann? To where is the man going? Or where is the man going to? Warum rennt das Pferd? Why is the horse running? Warum rennt das Pferd? Was kauft ihr? What are you buying? Was kauft ihr? If, however, the question word is the subject itself, you of course have to have the, uh, the subject is not going to come after the verb there because you already have the subject at the beginning. But, in those cases, it looks something like this. Wer geht dahin? Who is going to there? Wer geht dahin? Wer in this sentence is not only your question word, but also your subject of the sentence. Wer geht dahin? The other one here, was rennt wegen des Blitzes? Was rennt wegen des Blitzes? What is running because of the lightning? Wer kauft etwas? Wer kauft etwas? Who is buying something? So for each one of these, we have a question word, then our verb, and then since our question word is our subject, we just continue on with the rest of our sentence after that. Und jetzt seid ihr dran. Ihr müsst diese Fragen beantworten. So, you have to answer these questions in the comments down below. So it says, wie heißt du? Woher kommst du? Was magst du heute? Und studierst du an der Uni? These are going to be our closing questions for today. Uh, go ahead and leave them down in the comments so that I know that you can write full sentences, but also so that I know you understood what these questions were. Wie heißt du? Woher kommst du? Was magst du heute? Und studierst du an der Uni?
While I'm waiting for you guys to come up with your answers to these questions, I do have another question from uh, Magic Musics. He wants to know what's the difference between vile and vegan. Uh, that one's an actually uh, a relatively complicated question, but uh, the question is simplified if you know a little bit about the, uh, the German grammar terminology. So, uh, weil is technically a conjunction. It's used to uh, connect uh, clauses and phrases. So, um, you can use this as um, Ich gehe nach Hause, weil ich müde bin. I'm going home because I am tired. Because I am tired is that clause that goes with weil. Weil is a subordinating conjunction. It connects those two clauses together. Now, if you're using wegen, wegen is used as a preposition. This is used in front of a phrase, but not an entire sentence. You can't use it with a, a verb and all of that. It's just wegen des Regens, because of the rain, or wegen meines Hundes, because of my dog, or something like that, okay? Wegen is a preposition. Weil is a uh, conjunction. Uh, Gabriel is uh, attempting to tell us that it's vegan dem, um, but vegan dem would actually be used with the dative case, and while this is colloquial, this is used in a lot of uh, uh, common German language, uh, it is not actually the standard German. Technically speaking, even Duden still lists vegan uh, should be used with the genitive case, which is uh, a case that's going to come up a long time from now if you're uh, just starting out in the German language. Uh, Fawitz uh, says, is the subject always nominative? Yes, the subject is always nominative. Uh, that's kind of the reason that it's called the nominative, is because it's the subject of the sentence. Uh, wie lange lernt ihr schon Deutsch? From Lovell. Um, ich lerne seit 2004, nee, 2002. Uh, 2002 war ich in der High School und ich habe dann drei Klassen von Deutsch genommen und ja, seitdem lerne ich immer noch Deutsch. Ich glaube, man, man hört niemals auf, Deutsch zu lernen oder eine andere Sprache zu lernen. Man lernt immer noch. Es, uh, es muss immer so sein. Um Ah, we're starting to get some answers to the questions here. So, uh, Skills Salon is uh, the first one to answer. My name is Salon. Perfectly grammatically correct sentence. Ich komme aus USA. I would actually say ich komme aus den USA. I come from the USA. Den USA. But uh, otherwise not too bad there. Ich lerne Permkulture heute. I'm learning perm culture uh, today. Okay. Uh, learning how to do perms, I guess. And uh, ich habe kein Geld für Uni. I have no money for the university. Neither do I. That's why I'm not doing a master's course anymore. Um, Mike, ich komme aus den USA. Um, Stefan is uh, translating our sentences for us so that we know what the questions are. Uh, Gabriel says, ich komme aus Deutschland und wohne dort. Okay, Gabriel is apparently from Germany and lives there, so obviously his sentences are correct. Uh, freut mich für dich, Gabriel. Uh, I'm happy for you, Gabriel. Uh, <laughs> and let's see, we have Talib says, uh, Können Sie bitte uh, weiterlaufen in einem Satz machen? Uh, can I use the word weiterlaufen in a sentence? Um, I could if I used it in the past tense, but I'm trying to think of a way to use it in the present tense to avoid that. Um, I could say just dann laufe ich weiter, then I'm walking further or walking on. Um, weiter just goes at the end of the sentence, and laufen is conjugated like you would normally conjugate laufen. Ich laufe, du läufst. Uh, it has an umlaut for the du in the er sie form, but uh, ich laufe, du läufst, er sie es läuft, wir laufen, ihr lauft, sie laufen, sie laufen. And then you just put weiter at the end of the sentence, so uh, ich laufe heute ein bisschen weiter. I'm walking a little bit further today. Ah, Löw uh, mentions man lernt nie aus, yeah. Because I mentioned that you never stop learning a foreign language, and that's true. Uh, ich heiße Yahi, Yaya. Uh, ich komme aus Ägypten. Ich habe heute frei. Nein, ich arbeite. So, uh, Yaya apparently comes from Egypt. 
um, has today off and uh, doesn't uh, go to the university because uh, they work. Um, yeah, the only thing I would say about your sentence is that uh, heute should be lowercase instead of heute being capitalized, but otherwise everything is good. Um, Sie dürfen für diesem Gemälde nicht stehen bleiben, Sie müssen weiterlaufen. Yeah, that's a good grammatical co uh, correct sentence to use weiterlaufen in a sentence in the present tense, but the problem there is that you used a modal auxiliary, and uh, because of that you had to put the verb back together in one word. Um, which is probably not the the question that the person was actually asking here, because at the basic level, you know, you're usually asking questions about separable prefixes, and Vita would be a separable prefix. Uh, my name is Magic. Ich komme aus den USA. Ich habe nichts uh, macht. Ich bin zu jung. Oh, uh, I believe he tried to use the past tense and used uh, a combination of the two past tenses, but didn't quite get it right there. Ich habe nichts gemacht. Uh, should actually be, ich habe nichts gemacht. I did nothing. Ich bin zu jung. Uh, you could also say, ich mache nichts, which is, I'm doing nothing. Uh, ich bin zu jung. I'm too young. So apparently, uh, Magic is not uh, going to the university. He's uh, too young to do that. So um, you're good in German. Oh, uh, Gabriel thinks it should be der USA. Uh, unfortunately, der USA is uh, used if you think that USA is feminine. Technically speaking, since it's the United States of America, it should actually be Dane, um, meaning that it is plural in the dative case, not feminine. Um, a lot of people will use D USA instead of uh, meaning that it's the singular form instead. Um, and the reason behind this is relatively simple. Um, that they've heard D-O-S-A so, so often that they just assumed it was feminine, um, but it is an abbreviation for United States of America, so technically it should be plural uh, in Dane USA or aus Dane USA. Uh, Stefan, my name is Stefan, ich komme aus den USA. Uh, ich spiele, spiele Sprache, ich bin in Hochschule. Uh, so, Stefan, we have a few uh, few issues with your sentence here. We have the word Nama, uh, which is N-A-M-E. Uh, you put an H in there. Um, so, my Nama is Stefan. Ich komme aus den USA. I come from the USA. Um, auf means on, uh, which is not really what you meant here. Ich komme aus den USA. Uh, spiele, you spelled E-I and should be I-E. And always remember that if you have an EI or an IE combination, it should be, um, it, it should be, of course, uh, pronounced the second letter. So IE, you would pronounce it as E, uh, and then EI, you would pronounce it as I. Uh, ich bin in Hochschule, I'm in high school. That one's fine. Wie jung bist du? Uh, how young am I? Uh, ich bin 30 Jahre alt, I'm 30 years old. Uh, alles klar, danke schön. Wie alt bist du? <laughs> Löwel uh, is correcting again. Wie alt bist du instead of wie jung bist du? Uh, I personally take that uh, offense to that. Uh, I think the question should be how young are you, not how old are you. Uh, but yeah, ich bin 30. Uh, apparently, magic is uh, 13, so 13. Uh, komm mal aus das uh, USA. Kannst du das Alphabet auf Deutsch? Ja, das kann ich. So, can I do the uh, alphabet in German? Sure. Uh, do we want the American version or the uh, German version of the song? Because uh, the German version goes more like, uh, oh, what is the, the song? Uh, Frere Jacques. And uh, the American version goes more like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, but we'll go with the, the German version. So, uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, O, K, wunderbar, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, das ist nett. By request from Gabriel, there's your alphabet in the German language. Uh, ich komme aus den USA, ich komme aus den USA, kommst du aus den USA, ja, ich komme aus den USA. Uh. <laughs> uh, 
No, you're uh, you're good. It doesn't matter if you're correcting things or if I'm uh, correcting things. I actually appreciate it whenever people correct things in the comments. Um, it helps me whenever I make a mistake because I'm still not perfect. Um, because as I mentioned before, I'm still learning the language because uh, I've been speaking German since uh, I started taking classes in O2. Um, and since then, I've taken seven years of classes, uh, so, a semester abroad, and then I've been teaching now. This is my eighth year of teaching German. Um, so yeah, I've been learning German for a really long time at this point, but uh, I'm never perfect. So you can always um, you can always use more education. So level, don't feel bad about uh, the fact that you're correcting things occasionally. Um, Honestly, learners really appreciate it when you do correct things because they want to get it right. That's kind of the point. Um, and if I get something wrong, by all means, let me know. Um. <laughs> Grammatik Polizei, Grammar Police. Verben mit Präpositionen, Liste mit Beispiele. That's going to be uh, a long list. So apparently, uh, Taleb wants a, uh, a list of prepositions with examples, uh, verbs with prepositions, that is. So I assume he means verbs with fixed prepositions, so um, denken an, like to think of, um, gehören zu, and stuff like that, where it has a preposition that generally has to go with it. Um, that's going to have to be a topic for another day, I apologize, but uh, that's, uh, that's going to be a long discussion, sorry. Gabriel is apparently leaving us. He says, Ich muss gehen, war schön. Uh, gute Nacht, gute Nacht, Gabriel. Uh, and it looks like Tobias finally uh, decided to join us, and he says, Ahoy. Uh, unfortunately, I am going to have to sign off for the evening, um, or the afternoon, I guess it is. I've uh, been on here for a, a little bit longer than I was hoping for, but uh, I'm totally fine with that because I've got a, a lot of really good questions going down in the comments right now. But uh, thank you all for watching this. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Uh, if you want worksheets or a copy of this uh, this presentation or any other uh, presentations that I make on the YouTube channel here, uh, go ahead and check out my Patreon page, which is uh, patreon.com slash germanwithantrum. Uh, otherwise, you can check me out on my socials for Mr. Lantrum for all of the socials, uh, with the exception of, of course, my Instagram, which is germanwithantrum. But uh, check all of those things out, and uh, I am 